Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we're studying 1 Samuel chapter 27 and 28. Let's get started. Okay, so David is running from Saul and, well, he, he sees Gath. And so he goes to Gath knowing Saul isn't going to come there. Because Gath, Gath is what? Is a, the, part of the Philistines. Uh-huh. It's yeah. a town in, where Goliath of the Philistines. Yeah. And then um, he meets King yes. Agish again. And he gives him some land called Ziklag. Ziklag. Words are hard. Yes. Um and how long does he live there? Oh, he lives there for a year and four months with yeah. his two wives. Um Rebecca wait. Abigail. I don't remember. Abigail, Abigail and, and uh, Ahishat something. Ahishat, yeah. Y'all yeah. just read it. <laughs> Wait, it's right there. No, that's King Akish. Oh. <laughs> um, so he lives there with yeah, his two wives. There with his two wives. Um, and then his Saul finds out he lives there. And he's like, Not we can't there. there. But then... Wait, is that all? That's it. So uh, can I tell some... So, like, okay, so, so. <laughs> the Philistines fight many, many battles. And David, he killed Goliath, so they know he's super strong. But then, one of the battles, um, it's fighting against Israel. And um, David has tons of men on his side. And so... Doesn't have much. No, Saul has a bunch. Well, he yeah. has Saul's the Israelites. Yeah. So let me let me uh, yeah. talk about that part real quick. So David he gives him this land. Um, King Achish gives him this land, Ziklag, that he gets to live in, and it looks like he keeps it for a while because it looks like it becomes part of the king's territory even when he with the Israelites when he goes back. Um, but while David's living in this land, he is sneaking away and fighting against lots of people groups, other people who are the enemies of the Israelites, like the Amalekites and people like that. And so David is defeating them. God helps him win all those battles. And so he's getting wealthy. He's getting their animals and all of their things. Um, and so King Achish sees this and King Achish thinks, oh, he's turned on the Israelites. He's fighting against his own people. And that's where he's getting this stuff. And actually David does not correct him. He doesn't tell him actually it's the it's other bad guys um because David wants him to think he's on his side and you know King Achish has helped take care of him so the problem is one day the Philistines which is King Achish um words are hard <laughs> the Philistines do decide that they're going to attack the Israelites and so King Achish thinks that all this time David has been attacking his own people, the Israelites, and that's how he's gotten wealthy. And so he expects for David to join the fight, to go against the Israelites. And David's like, I will, I'm on your side. But obviously David is conflicted because although Saul is his enemy, I mean, that's why he's running. Yeah. The Israelite people are still his people. They're not his enemy. And so he's in a conflict here and we will see more of what David decides um, after this. But in the meantime, the Philistines are the ones who are helping David and they are taking care of him. Um, but then meanwhile, back at the Israelite camp, they find out the Philistines are about to attack. They're going to come against them. And Samuel is having a fit. Uh, I mean, not Samuel. Saul. <laughs> Samuel's dead. Saul is having a fit and Samuel is dead. And so Saul has no one to go to for advice and stuff. Saul, remember, has already disobeyed God. He's rejected God. He has spent all of this time not following God and not obeying him. And now Saul needs God because he's scared. And so the Bible tells us that Saul asked the Lord what he should do, but the Lord did not answer him. He didn't answer him in a dream. He didn't answer him through a prophet. In none of the ways that Saul was trying to hear from God did he hear. And so I think it's interesting. The Bible recap talks about this. Um, when God has already given us direction and told us what to do and we don't obey that, when we seek God for new direction, he's often not going to answer us because we haven't even obeyed the direction he already gave us. So 
God had given Saul all this direction in the past and Saul chose to disobey. And now all of a sudden Saul wants direction from God again. And God's like, you have not obeyed what I've already told you to do. So since Saul doesn't hear from God, he decides he's going to go to a psychic and he's going to disguise himself. And he wants this lady to talk to the dead, to tell him what he's looking for, to give him the wisdom he wants. But by going to a psychic, Saul is now, instead of seeking advice from God, he's seeking advice from God's enemies. And so the psychic talks to Samuel and she actually seems surprised that it worked, that she got to talk to him. She screams, the Bible tells us, which tells us as the reader that whatever's going on with this lady, this psychic, this was her job. Whatever's happening in this situation is different than what she normally does. So whether she usually uses an evil spirit to actually talk to dead people or whether she fakes it and pretends to talk to people, whatever happens, her reaction in this situation shows us that this is not happening through her power um, or her power she accesses. And so since Samuel is dead and he's with God because he followed God and we know he had a relationship with him, we can probably assume that this is God who is intervening here. Because Samuel is talking to Saul and he tells Saul, why have you caused me to come to you? Why have you brought me back? And then all, all Samuel tells Saul is everything that God has already told him. Everything Samuel, uh, God told Saul through Samuel when Samuel was living, Samuel continues to tell him here. And he says, the Lord has left you. He has taken the kingdom from you. He has given it to David instead. And he's done this because you did not obey him. And then Saul does get new information. He finds out, Samuel says, and tomorrow at this time, you and your sons will be with me. Well, where is Samuel? He's dead. dead. So that tells us <laughs> that um, Saul and his sons are going to die tomorrow. And Saul falls on his face. And the Bible tells us that he had not eaten very much that day. And so he's feeling faint. And the lady's like, the psychic lady's like, you need to eat. Let me get you some food. And yep, so thanks. she gives them food. And Saul and his men leave her house. And oh my goodness, what a day. And this just leads us to tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be real interesting. Uh, so guys, what was your takeaway? John, what was yours? My takeaway was I thought how it was a really bad decision and really dumb. How, um, so Saul, so, so, yeah. Um, he first talked to God, and no answer. Well, then he's like, oh, I trust God and stuff like that. But then he he went to a person that uses the devil's power to talk to the dead. And so I think that's just dumb. I agree. Yes. Saul is not showing wisdom, and he hasn't been showing that. For quite a while now. I agree with that. That was a bad choice. Jax, what about you? Okay, so my takeaway... Um, my takeaway was how God continues to provide David with great things. Uh, so, even though this is the king that David kind of acted crazy around, drooling and drawing on the wall, um, King Achish still takes him in. So, that's kind of a miracle because if... John here say he started drooling and coloring on the wall in front of me. I wouldn't want him to work for me. So God is just blessing David yes. over and over again. Agree. So today for me, as I watch Saul's actions and his sad relationship with God or lack of relationship with God, I see how he's disobeyed God, how he's rejected God, how he has wanted nothing to do with God. But now today, all of a sudden, when he finds himself in a bind and he needs help, now he wants to hear from God and talk to him and ask him for help. And so my takeaway today is that loving God and having a relationship with him does not mean that we come to him and talk to him and spend time with him only when we need something from him. Having a relationship with God is us wanting to know him all the time no matter if we're in a good mood no matter if we're in a bad mood no matter if we have everything that we ever need or if we have needs 
what if your friends only talked to you when they wanted something from you? Would that be a good friendship? It wouldn't. That'd be pretty sad, right? And so today's challenge, just a couple of questions. What are some ways that you can have a good relationship and friendship with God? What are some things you can put into practice? Maybe you're already doing it, but just talk about those things if you are. Maybe there are some things you can um, start trying out. And what are some fun ways that you can spend time with him? So talk about those things with your family. And if you think of new ways to put this into practice, to hang out with God this week, um, try it out. And let us know um, how that works out for you. All right, friends. We will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.